acknowledge the, the arrival of the Chief of Defense Staff, Vice Admiral Sesamwaman, and the on GBC's Admiral networks, Police. indeed, on uh, many Admiral other Admiral networks Admiral across Admiral. the length and breadth of uh, the country, bringing you live feed of the 64th Independence Parade here at the Jubilee House in Accra. Perhaps this is the first time we are having to see the celebration <clears throat> and the Independence Parade take place uh, at the Jubilee House. Of course, in the last two years, we've seen the celebration uh, go away from the capital Accra to other parts of the country. In 2019, it was held in the regional capital of the northern region, uh, Tamale. And then last year, 2020, it was uh, in the Ashanti regional capital of Kumasi. This year, however, it has had to come to the Jubilee House uh, due to the restrictions that have been brought upon all of us by the deadly COVID-19. Uh, and hopefully it will go away very soon. My name is Abdul Hayi Moumen. I am in commentary position with Captain Edward Sinanu Akapo. Captain, uh, very good morning to you. Many thanks for joining us uh, in commentary position this morning. Uh, uh, we look forward to uh, a very brief ceremony, don't we? Sure. Uh, because obviously uh, there have been restrictions and we are told that the ceremony uh, will not last more than an hour or so. Uh, and I'm sure you've also been part of the, 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 the rehearsals uh, ahead of today. <laughs> uh, earlier on Wednesday, people heard gunshots, uh, and and that uh, brought some some uh, concerns. But I'm sure uh, those concerns were addressed because uh, obviously uh, these were some sounds from the rehearsals that the military were undergoing here. You give us a brief, uh, you know, account of what happened even during the rehearsal period before even we we proceed on today's parade. Thank you very much. Uh, brother before i proceed uh, a very good morning to our viewers and uh, i would like to say that uh, on the behalf on behalf of my bosses i say i wish everyone a happy independence anniversary celebration yeah you know in the military we always say rehearsal is very important yes. because anytime we undertake rehearsals it's makes us understand what we are doing and at every time you undertake an activity you know every sequence in your head and you have to execute it to perfection without fail so during the rehearsals you realize that right, everything so let me just cut in there a while ago we witnessed the arrival of the chief justice of the republic of ghana uh, justice in india boa uh, also uh, because in recent times he's been one of the busiest people in the republic yes. uh, just a couple of days ago he read uh, that um, judgment uh, on the election petition uh, so he has arrived okay yeah, in your shorts. On the flag. We will also have special invitations. Okay, so you, you went to... We will also have special invitations. Our mother is to the next and rise on the second. All right, so you were telling us uh, about, uh, about well, we, we've seen some uh, senior military officers yes. also arrive. Yes. yes. So uh, do, uh, our senior officers who arrived were the service chiefs. Uh, we have uh, Major General uh, Thomas Opon Pepra as the chief of army staff arriving uh, with the chief of naval staff and then the chief of air staff arriving uh, as uh, the shots give us over there we as i was saying as i was saying earlier the rehearsal actually took us through what uh, we we are all actually going to uh, uh, experience uh, during today's uh, parade so uh, the rehearsal in, uh, saw the process where troops marched on parade 
and then we also rehearse that of uh, the fly pass of the heli to synchronize with the national anthem and then uh, alongside uh, the firing of the 21 gun salute so it was during the rehearsal of the 21 gun salute that i think uh, there were yes people uh, there were reports that there were gunshots in the premise of the jubilee house and so if you just join the feed, this is the 64th Independence Parade that we are about to witness here at the Jubilee House, the first time ever in the Fourth Republic uh, that this uh, celebration has had to move to the seat of government due to restrictions brought upon all of us by the coronavirus pandemic. Of course, uh, in the last two years, the celebration has been taken away from Accra. The first time it was taken away from Accra, it was held in the regional capital of the northern region, Tamale, where uh, following the restoration of peace to Dabong, uh, it was thought that uh, to honor the people for embracing peace, uh, the independence was taken there and they brought a lot of economic activities to the Tamale Township at that time. But uh, the following year, which was last year, 2020, the event was moved to the Kumasi Sports Stadium, where uh, we saw a lot of cultural display. The Kente was in its abundance. A lot of people were hoping that this year it would be moved to another regional capital. Unfortunately, COVID-19 has not permitted that. Uh, but all the same, the GES has issued uh, instructions to all schools to desist from organizing the usual parades we have become so used to witnessing, especially on 6th March. And I'm sure a lot of the students who have been participating will be very disappointed But this decision not to organize the parade in the manner that we are all used to seeing is to the advantage of all of us as a people and particularly to those students as well because it limits their exposure to the possibility of contracting the virus. I am in commentary position with Captain Edward Sinanu Akako who will be explaining to us all the military drills we are about to witness uh, this morning. Of course, we've seen the arrival of some dignitaries already. The latest to arrive, the Chief Justice of the Republic, who was instrumental in the just ended election petition, petition that lasted for at least 18 days of sitting. 12 of those days attended to the substantive issue and uh, five of those days were used for the pre-trial because we've gone uh, ahead and caused that hurdle as well. It's the second time in the history of Ghana where we have had to go for an election petition that has also ended peacefully. Of course, the military will do this without the students, the students who usually would be part of this parade are not part of it this year, obviously. But again, uh, Captain Edward Senana Akako is with me in commentary position. Uh, and so let's talk a little about uh, the parade commander. Do we know him? Sure. Uh, the parade commander for this morning's uh, parade is in the person of Colonel Richard Kaimensa. No, you know Colonel Richard Kaimensa uh, was born on uh, on the 12th February 1970 in Accra, and he's an old student of the St Thomas Aquinas Secondary School and the Kumasi Academy as well. He also attended the University of Science and Technology, where he attained his bachelor's degree in science, in social science, French and economics. Uh, he also holds a master's, master of arts degree in governance and leadership from the Ghana Institute of Pub Public Relations and at, uh, Ghana Institute of Management and Public Relations, Public Administration. Wrong. Uh, he was enlisted into the Ghana Military Academy in 1995 and he commissioned into the Airborne Force 
on the 22nd August 1997 with a regular career course 37. He is also a parachute jumping instructor, a very experienced one mm. for that matter. And, and I recall that last year, uh, Captain Group Captain Edu Jemfi was uh, the parade commander in Kumasi. He did an excellent job, and we, we do hope that uh, today the parade commander will equally be up to the tax as well. Sure, he is a very experienced uh, senior officer, and he's always up to the task. <laughs> The vice, president. the vice president of the Republic of Ghana, His Excellency Al Haji Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, has just arrived at the parade grounds. And uh, shortly, uh, there will be the playing of the national anthem. Uh, and then he will proceed to take his seat as well. National anthem at this point in time. Okay, so just a brief one, a quick one. I, I was talking about the uh, military hierarchy that had arrived. We, we, we saw the arrival of... Okay, National Anthem. Okay, so we do realize that usually when the uh, vice president attends a ceremony, which will also be attended by the president, usually uh, the national anthem is truncated at a point. Uh, why, why is this so? Yes, you know, uh, the president is entitled for the full uh, presidential salute. And so once the president is coming, it is proper that it is abridged or truncated for the president to also come and get the full... Uh, verse of the anthem. So that is uh, a military tradition. All right. So, Group Captain, uh, sorry, uh, Captain Edward Senano Akapo explaining to us uh, the reasons for which uh, the national anthem is abridged for the vice president, especially when he is at the ceremony that will also be attended by the president. And the arrival of the vice president does indicate that in a couple of minutes, the president of the republic will also be joining us here uh, for this ceremony. We see the vice president in a tete a tete with some of the leading government officials who are also here uh, this morning uh, for the 64th Independence Parade of uh, the Republic of Ghana's uh, in attainment of independence on the 6th of March in the year 1957. Uh, when uh, the very first president of the Republic of Ghana, at that time Ghana had not attained Republican status yet. Uh, uh, just after we got independence, uh, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, the first president of Ghana, did declare that the independence of Ghana is meaningless unless it is linked up with the total liberation of the entire African continent. This was held, uh, these statements were made at the polo grounds right here in Accra uh, and uh, since then Ghana has seen some ups and downs in its history but uh, thankfully since the introduction of the fourth republic after the 1992 elections when uh, former president Jerry John Rawlings the late was sworn into power in uh, on the 7th of uh, January 1992 three uh, we've had very smooth transitions and uh, where persons have felt uh, elections have been rigged or there were some irregularities in elections they've gone to court and the court has taken a decision on that in, at least on two occasions we've seen electoral disputes settled by the courts amicably and uh, that is one of our highs as a republic and we are proud to be Ghanaians even as we celebrate the 64th anniversary of our attainment of independence.
you were telling us about some of the top ranking military officials who have also arrived already yes so uh, as we saw earlier we saw the chief of the army staff uh, arriving who is in the person of major general thomas of Pefra. we also saw the arrival of the chief of the naval staff who is in the person of rear admiral isa yakubu also arriving and then uh, we saw the arrival of uh, the chief of air staff in the person of air vice marshal frank hansen also arriving so, so I, uh, i'm sure all as they have arrived yes, the cds will also arrive with the president because on occasions like this uh, he serves as a uh, aide camp uh, to, to the, the president, president. Yes. yes uh the usually uh, yeah, uh, usually he does that in the company of, of the, the inspector IGD general of police as well yes. uh, so it, it will be exciting to see uh, how this is done because usually uh, what we have become used to seen at the Black Star Square when uh, that presidential vehicle carries the IGP, the CDS, and the president uh, to go around to inspect the parade. Yes. Uh, we all saw similar events, I um, mean, similar things uh, go take place in Tamale at the stadium yes. and also at the Kumasi uh, Sports Stadium. Yes. Uh, it remains to be seen if the president will be riding that presidential vehicle <laughs> today as well, given the fact that uh, the crowd here uh, at the parade is very limited. Yes. And uh, it remains to be seen how it will be done. Uh, are we aware uh, what shape? The inspection of the parade will take today okay actually this year's parade would actually not be inspected uh, per the design of the parade what is going actually going to happen is the president once he arrives and uh, the parade commander would go and ask permission and invite him to light the perpetual flame. Right. Yes. Yeah, so and we are bringing you scenes from outside the Jubilee House. All right. We've taken you back to the Jubilee House now, at uh, the forecourt of the Jubilee House, where all is set for the arrival of the President of the Republic uh, for the commencement of the 64th Independence Parade here at the Jubilee House. Uh, to be specific, it's at the forecourt of the Jubilee House. And uh, this is the first time we are seeing this in the history of, uh, I believe, in the history of the 64 years mm -hmm. of the existence of Ghana yeah. that we have had to do this without school children. Mm -hmm. And it's not because of ex uh, excessive rain, yeah. uh, but due to restrictions of COVID-19, uh, I'm sure the students, the children, will be disappointed uh, that this year they have not been made a part of this but it's all for yes. for their own good yes. and for the good of every one of us here indeed uh, but are we seeing similar events organized by the military in the region at all no actually we are not seeing similar events organized by the military this is uh, actually the one of its kind uh, due to uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, you realize that the parade itself has been simplified and modified. Yes, so that we all observe the protocols laid down for the prevention of uh, this pandemic. Mm. So regional, regionally, I don't think uh, the military is not, or the security services are not going to organize any of such events. Uh, this is just one of its kind. Right. The moment, please permit me, let me also reiterate that we should all as Ghanaians, even as we celebrate the 64th independence anniversary, we should try and keep uh, practicing the protocols laid down in place by way of prevention of the coronavirus, because our lives are very important. Ghana needs us all, and uh, no, 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 no country would wish to see its citizens die as a result of uh, not practicing the protocols laid down by way of uh, the coronavirus.
of course, uh, let me just take a few minutes back uh, and give you a, a little reminder of um, Ghana's independence history. Yes, uh, we'll, we'll come to that as well. And uh, at a point, I'm here with um, Captain Edward Senanu Akako. You, uh, you also may help me to recount portions of Ghana's history as we, we attempt to give our viewers uh, a brief history and there uh, we have uh, some of the senior government officials as well in your shot at the moment um, the independence day of ghana of course is a national holiday and is celebrated yearly and the day is granted as an official state holiday for the citizens of ghana both within and in the diaspora to honor and celebrate the heroes of ghana who led the country to attain its independence now the day is celebrated every 6th of March uh, and um, in remembrance of the day that marks the declaration of Ghanaian independence from the British colonial rule and there we have the arrival of the President of the Republic His Excellency Nana Adudangwa Ekufado uh, conspicuously missing today uh, Captain is the, the, the horses, uh, I haven't seen the horses today, uh, it's, it's part of the restrictions? Yes, we just don't want to have too many people uh, flood uh, the seat of government or the Jubilee House. That is how come this year's parade, you didn't see the horses or even the military vehicles that we used to parade, you didn't see any And the president them. in his all white attire adorned with the Ghanaian colors on his collar and on uh, his, his sleeves as well. Uh, we see the Ghanaian colors uh, also around his breast pocket area. Uh, well, I'm sure later we'll be clamoring to find out who the designer of uh, that uh, shirt is, but national anthem at the moment. That was the national anthem. The president's getting the full compliments. Again, uh, when the vice president arrived, we saw that he uh, was giving an abridged version of that. Uh, Captain, you explained that usually that's what happens. Yes. The president is always entering the, the pledge now. To right. be faithful and loyal to Ghana, my motherland. I pledge myself to the service of Ghana with all my strength and with all my heart. I promise to hold in high esteem our heritage won for us through the blood and fire of our fathers. And I pledge myself in all things to uphold and defend the good name of Ghana. So help me God. The President of the Republic has now been welcomed to the parade grounds here at the forecourt of the Jubilee House and he is currently uh, has taken his seat. We will now have the, of course, uh, such ceremonies. We usually have the traditional prayers, the Muslim prayers, and the Christian prayer as well. 
we will soon witness all these prayers performed. Okay, I understand uh, we won't have the traditional prayers this year, uh, but obviously there will be prayers by all means. And uh, after that, we will then witness the lighting of the perpetual flame by the President of the Republic, who is also the Commander-in-Chief of the Ghana Armed Forces, Nana Adudanko Kufuado. And there will be a silent drill with the mass band. Of course, again, we will have the national salute and the 21-gun salute and fly past by the Air Force. 21-gun uh, salute. Uh, usually we hear about that, but what, what's the significance, especially on such occasions? Uh, the significance of gun salutes actually uh, is the highest form of, uh, let's say, compliment given to a head of state or for the celebration of an anniversary. So in this case, as we celebrate uh, our 64th independence anniversary, uh, the, gun sal the 21 gun salute is uh, fired to commemorate or to signify the importance of this day and as a highest form of compliment as well. All right, so uh, the opening prayers have just been announced by the MC for the occasion. And so we'll listen to the prayers at this point. Bringing nations, including ours, to its knees. Give us good health and complete recovery to those who are affected by the deadly coronavirus. Oh, the most merciful of all, bless us all and bless our nation, Ghana. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma wafiq ra'isi jumhuriyatu Ghana bi tawfiqak. Allahumma kullahu awnan wa mu'ina. Ala al-khayri wal huda wal rashad ya zal jalal wal ikram. اللهم إنا نستوديك دولة غانا حكامها وشيوحها وأبنائها والمقيمين على أرضها اللهم صرف عنها البلاء والوباء والقلاء والزلازل والمهن اللهم لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك والعظيم سلطانك اللهم لك الحمد حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه اللهم ربنا جعلنا من جندك فإن جندك هم الغالبون وجعلنا من حزبك فإن حزبك هم المفلحون وجعلنا من أوليائك فإن أوليائك لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يعزلون آمين. We continue in prayer in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Dear Lord, you have been our strength and our guide in ages past, and we know that you will continue to be with us in the future. Thank you this morning 
that we have the opportunity to remember the freedom you gave to us through our forebears. Thank you for their efforts, and thank you so far, O oh God, for the gift of life and strength for us to continue with what they did. As we commemorate our 64th anniversary as a people, we also ask that you forgive us. Forgive us where we had fallen short. And forgive us, O oh God, when we offend you. We pray committing our future into your hands. And Lord, we ask that in your mercy, you let the rains come in its time and harvest come in its time. That together as a people, we'll glorify your name. We pray for all who have responsibility in one way or the other to ensure that our country move forward. We pray for the arms of government. We pray, O oh God, for the security services. We pray for our farmers. We pray for our fishermen. We pray for our chiefs and our queen mothers. We pray for all opinion leaders who have the responsibility to ensure that discipline and respect is maintained in our country. Lord, we pray that in your mercy, give us a heart that will shun corruption and things that are unnecessary for our development. We pray for the President of the Republic of Ghana and the Commander-in-Chief of the Ghana Armed Forces, Nana Adodankwa Ekufuado, and the Vice President, Dr. Alhaji Mahmoud Bahumian, and all who support them in the dispensation of their duties. Father, we pray for health. We pray, O oh God, that even as you have seen us through the pandemic up to this time, you continue to heal our land, heal everybody who has been affected by this disease. Dear Lord, let this year and the coming times be a gracious one unto us. May your name be glorified, that when we ask you, you will do it for us, because between you and us is action and fulfillment. May your name be praised, because we have prayed in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, so Thank that was the, the Muslim and uh, Christian prayers by uh, Naval Captain Paul A.J. John and then uh, the Imam in the person of Lieutenant Yusuf Mohammed. Naval Captain Paul A.J. John is actually the Director of uh, Religious Affairs of the Ghana Armed Forces. So uh, at this point, the President of the Republic will be invited to light the perpetual flame. He is also the Commander-in-Chief of the Ghana Armed Forces, Nana Adudanko Kufado. The lighting of the perpetual flame is a symbol of the spirit of independence. It reminds us of our responsibility to keep the spirit alive. just heard from the MC trying to uh, explain to uh, the public uh, the significance of the lighting of the perpetual flame. Um, yeah. But we may want to break it down even further for the understanding of uh, our viewers. Uh, the lighting of the perpetual flame, how significant is it, especially on occasions such as this? Uh, it is actually very important, very significant, because the flame signifies the spirit of uh, us as Ghanaians and to light it and keep the flame is to tell us that we should keep the spirit burning, we should keep the spirit in positive mood, not to give up on any uh, situation. So as the president lights the perpetual flame, he is actually saying or telling us as Ghanaians that as our leader, he is not going to let down the spirit of Ghana. He's not going to let down the spirit of patriotism. But he is actually holding on to it for all of us to be proud as Ghanaians. Mm. And uh, it's, it's quite windy here at the forecourt of the Jubilee House. And that uh, makes it a bit difficult for the microphones to pick 
the sound as uh, the commander of the parade was inviting the president. Uh, however, uh, that short ceremony is over and the president is now making his way to light the perpetual flame. Seeing this take place at the Black Star Square, and this is the first time we are having to see the perpetual flame lighted here at the Jubilee House. Of course, because again, this is the first time the ceremony is being held here at the Jubilee House, the seat of government, due to the restrictions brought upon us by the coronavirus pandemic. Yes. Okay, so, Mumin, let me make a quick one here. Uh, during the week, uh, let's say on Thursday, the president actually uh, confirmed the appointment and subsequent promotion of the CDS. You know, he took over on the 5th uh, of November, in an acting capacity. Uh, 5th February, in an acting capacity from uh, Lieutenant General Obed Boma Aqua. Uh, and during the week on Thursday, the president uh, affirmed his appointment as the substantive chief of the defense staff, and he was promoted to the rank of vice, uh, vice admiral. And uh, there we have the president uh, currently lighting the perpetual flame. Uh, the flame is yet to uh, pop up. Uh, I'm sure it will come up in a few minutes uh, yes. as the president attempts to do you so. Know, because of the wind. Uh, uh, and, uh, yes, uh, there we have it. There we have it. President has just lighted the perpetual flame and will return to his seat. Uh, of course, um, he, he did so in the company of the IGP and the CDS. You were, you, were, you were giving us a brief information about the CDS who just got confirmed. Yes, he was actually confirmed on the third day uh, to maintain the substantive position as the chief of the defense staff and the president also promoted him to the rank of vice admiral, mm. making him the senior most a three-star general in the Ghana Armed Forces. Wow. Yes. Right. Uh, and, um, of course, uh, we've seen a number of changes to the ceremony this year. Uh, obviously, the absence of the school children is one thing no one can miss on this occasion, but also because uh, the president uh, together with his aid comes on this yes. special occasion, yes. the CDS and the IGP are not riding uh, that very special yes. uh, presidential vehicle which has been designed for occasions such as this yes. uh, because the numbers here have been reduced drastically yes. and this ceremony promises to be a very short and brief yes. ceremony as well. Yes. So we'll have then another national salute and then the 21 gun salute and fly past by the Air Force uh, pretty shortly. Yeah, the, the national salute is actually going to come after the, silent the drill display, mm -hmm. the drill display by the contingents on parade. It's a very spectacular uh, display. I, I'm sure viewers would really love to see what display is going to take place. Uh, 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 and you, may, you, may, you may want to give us a peek into what the silent drill display uh, might look like and its significance even as we wait. Uh, we see the parade commander uh, marching towards the commander-in-chief of the Ghana Armed Forces again. Um, he's, done. he's done with that now. Yes, he actually asked permission to carry on with the rest of the parade and he has been granted permission by the president of the republic and the commander-in-chief of the ghana armed forces uh, i would also like to say our mc for this morning's uh, ceremony is in the person of flight lieutenant Elizabeth Fadila Salifu uh, from the Ghana Armed Forces Public Relations uh, Directorate. So 
in, 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 in a moment, we are going to experience or uh, view the drill display by the contingents on parade. The drill display, is that what lay persons would usually call the match pass? Okay. Uh, so that's what we have become used to see, yes. especially on days such as uh, what we are witnessing today. Yes, the match pass is actually when we march along the designated path mm. on the Black Star Square, right through in front of the days and salute the president. But actually, this one, they they actually using their weapons to display. Uh, and it's a spectacular view. Okay, view. so so they, they've started the yes. the drill display at this point in time, yes. and these are men drawn from the Ghana Armed Forces. Yes, we're talking about the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, uh, and the Air Force, and then uh, other uh, sister security services. Sister security services, yes. including the Ghana Police Service, the Ghana Police Service, uh, the, the Ghana Immigration Service, yes, and the Ghana Prison Service, the Ghana National Fire Service, the Custom Division of the Ghana Revenue Authority, the Ghana Immigration Service, and the Ghana National Ambulance Service. They comprise the other security services uh, doing this drill display with the uh, personnel drawn from the Ghana Armed Forces. You, you see the color also on parade. Uh, the MC spoke about the colors on parade. Okay, so that's the drill display. And uh, the band is also formed by all these other uh, security agencies from uh, the Ghana Armed Forces, the Ghana Navy, the Ghana Immigration Service, the Ghana Air Force, yes. uh, the Ghana Ambulance Service, and all the other security agencies, including the Ghana Prison Service as well, and the Ghana Fire Service. Ghana National Fire, and then the Ambulance Service, the Ghana Ambulance, National yes. Ambulance Service. So permit me, let me just give you uh, the, those, the colors on parade this morning. We have the national color, mm -hmm. and the one carrying the national color is in the person of Captain Maximus Ousu Pepra. He is carrying the national color. And then the one carrying the Ghana Army color is in the person of Lieutenant Kwesi Eninakwa, called uh, Naval Lieutenant Kenneth Opoku is carrying the Navy Ensign. And then uh, the color ensign for the Ghana Air Force is in the person of Flight Lieutenant Prince Ni Teko Tegu. They are carrying uh, the colors on parade this morning and colors are just not carried on parade they are actually escorted mm. because of its significance and because of the importance of colors they are always protected by the a detachment of elite soldiers referred to as color escorts and the color escorts for today's ceremony are in the person of staff sergeant Heheatro Gustav sergeant Eim Frimpom Michael Staff Sergeant Bouvier Samuel, Petty Officer Class 1, Marshal Hagan, Petty Officer Class 2, Ashia Paul, Sergeant Ankara Samuel, and we have Sergeant Ajetwa Clement. They are actually the color escorts, escorting the color because of its importance. And then the ban on parade this morning comprised of personnel drawn from the Ghana Armed Forces Mass Band and then the Ghana Police Service Band. They are under the command of Naval Lieutenant Theophilus Stanley Brock and the band drum major is in the person of Sergeant Osei Patrick. So the drill display is over. National anthem. Yes, about. now we have the, another national salute. Then this is during the period where we witness the 21 gun salute, salute as well all right and then the fly passed by the Ghana Air Force all right yeah sure. one
aircraft is also coming. What a beautiful display oh. and the timeliness of all these activities is what baffles me. Uh, this means that a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, preparation uh, and we've seen the fly past with the Ghana flag on that uh, chopper flying past the Jubilee House in this very beautiful manner right after the 21 gun salute. This, this must have taken this must have taken uh, a lot of rehearsal yes. to get the timing to perfection. Yes. Actually, we rehearsed we actually rehearsed this throughout the week. We actually rehearsed it throughout the week, and even after rehearsal, the Air Force took time to rehearse the time within which the take off and then within which they fly past. And and I, I also realized that the 21 gun shots happened within uh, the time that the national anthem was being played. Yes. All timed to perfection. Exactly. And the, the, the chopper flew in right at the tail end of the 21st gun, gun shot. Yes. Uh, it's, it's, it's amazing how you are able to do this that uh, is, to, to perfection. That is actually the importance of rehearsals, as we always say. Once you rehearse, you get things right. And this is the 64th Independence Parade live on GBC's networks, uh, uh, also provided for all other TV networks uh, throughout the length and breadth of the country. Uh, and uh, it's the first time the Independence Day Parade has been shifted to the Jubilee House, the seat of government, because of restrictions by COVID-19. So uh, in no time, the president will actually give his address, his 64th Independence Day anniversary celebration address. Of course, uh, yes. uh, the, the Independence Day address by the president of the republic who oh, is also the commander in chief of the Ghana Armed Forces, uh, is next. And the president, who got re elected uh, on the 9th of, uh, uh, actually, on the, after the 7th December elections, the declaration was done on the 9th. His uh, victory was challenged in court. Uh, just uh, on the 4th of March, that's two days ago, the court, uh, Supreme Court of Ghana, ruled that indeed he won that uh, election legitimately. The President of the Republic about to address the nation on the 64th anniversary celebrations of the Republic of Ghana. I'm sure he's waiting for the chopper that is still in the skies here at the Jubilee House to fly past for the noise to reduce so he can begin uh, okay so president has started talking the struggle for liberation of the African continent. As we lowered the British Union Jack on the eve of 6 March 1957 and replaced it with our own, the iconic red, gold, green flag with the black star in the center, the mood of citizens of this newly minted state was one of unrestrained excitement and jubilation because of the prospects of what the future held for us. Later that night, at the old polo grounds, that vision of what an independent Ghana could be, that is a prosperous, progressive country, which was to be an active player in the affairs of the continent and the world, was eloquently laid bare by our historic first leader, Kwame Nkrumah. 
The world indeed took notice of us. We have the likes of Dr. Martin Luther King, Mrs. Corrector Scott King, Philip Randolph, Adam Clayton Powell, Ralph Bunch and Horace Mann, leaders of the American Civil Rights Movement, as well as U.S. Vice President Richard Nixon, present with us to commemorate the birth of our new nation. We were an example for the rest of Africa to follow. Not surprisingly, much was expected of the poster boy country. On 63 previous occasions, we have generally usually congregated in our capital of Accra and recently in other locations around the country, Tamale in 2019 and Kumasi last year to celebrate our nation's independence. At these annual events, we have sought to express a deep consciousness of love for country and the importance of ensuring that we realize our potential as the Black Star of Africa. Year after year, we commit ourselves to ensuring that we work to lift the standard of living of the Ghanaian and help construct an economy that is capable of creating a society of opportunities for all. It's taken quite some time for us to get there. But I believe there is far more self-confidence among us Ghanaians today than there has been since the very early days of self-government, that we can make it if we work at it. Today, freedom and the cultivation of democratic values are strengthening our determination to bring into being a new Ghana that is neither pawn nor victim of the world order. Attachment to the rule of law, respect for individual liberties, human rights, the principles of democratic accountability, and the dictates of social justice has deepened for our common benefit. Nevertheless, we recognize that the biggest challenge confronting us is to be able to put our country on the path of sustained progress and prosperity and enhance the well-being of every Ghanaian. Since 2017, a considerable amount of work has been undertaken to help us achieve this objective. Consistently for three successive years, our nation had one of the fastest growing economies in the world, lead us, us to become the largest destination of foreign direct investment in West Africa. Global automobile companies had either set up shop in Ghana or had experienced their desire to do so. The basic tenets of social justice, that is access to education and health care, were being guaranteed for all our people. We had become self-sufficient in food production and for the first time in a long while exported our surpluses to our neighbors. Sustained efforts through digitization were being made to formalize our economy and we had hastened our critical journey of industrialization and value addition activities, whose result would be to create jobs for the teeming masses of Ghanaians. Successful Ghanaian diplomacy enabled the African Union to agree to the location here in Accra of the Secretariat of the African Continental Free Trade Area, arguably the most important initiative of the African Union since its foundation. This is the first time since independence that we've had the privilege of playing host to a major pan-African institution. The single African market, which began trading on 1st January, will present Ghanaian enterprises and businesses with a huge opportunity for the rapid development of the Ghanaian and African economy. When the global pandemic of COVID-19 struck, it derailed our progress and wrecked havoc on all aspects of national life. Lives and livelihoods have been affected, 
the economy has suffered and government has had to cushion households and businesses from the effects of the virus. If any more evidence were needed of the impact of COVID-19, the fact that this, the 64th Independence Day celebration, has had to be canceled and substituted with essentially a virtual celebration is one of them. Collectively, my fellow Ghanaians, we all work to ensure a relatively favorable situation with respect to the virus when it first broke out. And as much as our active case count has recently risen, I appeal to all of you to help ensure its decline. We did that before, and we can do it again. Yes, the first vaccines have arrived in the country, and they have begun to be deployed. And I appeal passionately to each one of you to take the vaccine when it is your turn. But however, we cannot afford to let go of the enhanced hygiene and mask-wearing protocols which should define our way of living. These protocols have not only helped in the fight against COVID-19, but else have also helped ensure the cholera, for example, is no longer a health concern. If we are to be successful in building a resilient Ghana, capable of withstanding in future external shocks such as COVID-19, then we must all put our shoulders to the wheel already. Government has taken steps to revitalize and transform the economy, a process which is hinged on the 100 billion CD Ghana Cares or Batampa program, the linchpin of our drive towards the rapid industrial transformation of our economy, our main national priority. The Minister for Finance will this month, God willing, provide to Parliament further details on the measures to be taken to spur on the process of economic recovery. A year from now, the benefits of economic recovery will begin to show. A year from now, our quest to move Ghana to a situation beyond aid will be accelerated and our self-reliance enhanced. A year from today, we should regain our pride of place as one of the fastest growing economies, not only in Africa, but also in the world. A year from now, we should be processing more and more of our raw materials to help create jobs for the millions of Ghanaian youth. A year from now, more and more of Ghanaian children should be having access to education. A year from now, every district and region should have a hospital where residents will be able to have decent, affordable health care. Fellow Ghanaians, this is not beyond us. If we put our hearts and minds to it, we, who are the first to gain our independence in colonial Africa, can make it and protect our heritage and environment. Let us not allow our energies to be sapped by either the failures of the past or the challenges of today. Let us embrace today's challenges as opportunities for a brighter future. Let us redefine our sense of national responsibility and remove any doubt some may continue to have about our ability to manage our own affairs. Let us devote ourselves to the freedom and welfare of Mother Ghana albeit an arduous task. I'm confident that with dedication, hard work, honesty, and integrity, we can fulfill the dreams and aspirations of the founding fathers of our nation who envisaged us to be a dynamic, progressive, prosperous, and united nation, a nation that under God, in J.B. Danko's immortal words, cherished its ancient freedom. We must all step up and play significant roles in the development of Ghana, our motherland. Let us bequeath to our children 
their children and generations on board, a nation of hope and opportunity, not one of despair and retrogression. With God on our side, we can unleash our considerable energies and make our own unique contribution to the growth of world civilization. Happy 64th day independence celebration to all of us, and may God bless us all and our homeland Ghana and make her great and strong. I thank you for your attention. Distinguished guests, that was the 64th Independence Anniversary Address by the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Ghana Armed Forces. The President of the Republic, Commander-in-Chief of the Ghana Armed Forces, just uh, finished delivering the 64th Independence Anniversary Address, uh, indicating that uh, we should keep Mr. united Mr. as a country. Okay, BMC making some announcements. All too soon, we have come to the end of the 64th Independence Day Parade. The parade commander will now ask permission to march off the parade. So that was a swift and a fast one. Mm. Not taking us to the afternoon or making the parade a very prolonged one. It was just a simple parade, simplified and modified. Indeed, we're told that they will not travel beyond uh, one hour. Yes. And we are within, uh, it's just about 45 minutes ago since yes. uh, this parade started. And we are almost at the tail end of the parade now. The president, uh, the, the parade commander seeking permission to march off the parade. The, the parade. Yes. Uh, and, um, uh, this is a very significant shift from what we have become so used to yes. during uh, celebrations uh, and, and such parades. Uh, we have no option. Uh, coronavirus has actually uh, changed the face of activities for us in these few days. So that's a national salute before the president departs. Your shot, that's the band, band officer, the one in charge. national anthem has now been played uh, that means that um, effectively we've come to the end of the parade yes and uh, you 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 were about to introduce uh, to tell us one of the persons the key military figures who appeared on our screens a while ago yeah actually I, will, I was actually trying to say the band also in charge of the band was in the person of uh, Naval Lieutenant Stanley Theophilus Brock. He is actually in charge of the band, the mass band this morning. And the mass band comprises of the mass band of the Ghana Armed Forces and that of the Ghana Police, the band of the Ghana Police Service. Right. Okay, so the president. Uh, leaving the premises, the forecourt of the Jubilee House, in a short while.